Well, here we are. I, in particular, am in a pretty different locale. This is, if you're, if there's any of my patrons watching, you may recognize it already. I'm, uh, I'm back home in Clay County, which for a long time, if I was back home in Clay County, that meant I couldn't do shit computer-wise because I had no cell phone service and no Wi-Fi. But now, every time I come home, I stay in my best friend Dustin Thompson's childhood home, which is now an Airbnb. His mama, who was like my mama, she just lets us stay here because she's an angel of a woman and she's got Wi-Fi and all that stuff. So I'm in the uh, top bedroom of Thompson's childhood home, which was built by his hippie daddy, the Duggar. The Duggar built this house. And so I'm sure, look like there's the bed and stuff. It's very it's you know, it's pretty cool. But look at this little addition right here. Oh, yeah. Look Ooh. at the ceiling. Can you oh see? My the God. Ceiling? Yeah. You hit your head when you poop. It's You have to squat down to like if you're seated on the toilet it's fine but like to even get on the toilet you have to like squat down it's like a little hobbit hole like the shower with, yeah with a toilet in it yeah uh so it's a it's an interesting addition but yeah i'm here because we're actually trying to we're trying to do a little bit of work to and then sell the house i grew up in so that house is currently like ripped all to shit um because we're gonna try to try to sell it we thought about renting it and stuff like that. But dude, so Mich Thompson's mom who Airbnb this house was like, and other people too were like, I don't think you want to rent something in Salina, <laughs> right. you know, it's like, well, for mostly for trash reasons, I think, but just, <laughs> you know, and so I, we decided, I guess we're just going to try to say, and the thing is like, dude, even in Salina, the fucking housing market. So insane that even in Clay County, like, we haven't listed it or nothing. Haven't in, we've talked to a realtor, but we haven't like engaged one formally. We're working on the house. We have gotten between me, Paige, and Uncle Tim. Like we've probably gotten seven or eight. Like we've got a couple straight up offers from yeah. people, and and uh, but also seven or eight or more like messages of interest. Like, hey, y'all selling that? Because I want it. I'm telling you right now, I want it. Or my daughter wants it, or whatever. Because yeah. like. There ain't nothing else for sale here. So like, it's pretty crazy. It's like, it's even reached Salina and like, you know, it ain't nothing compared to anywhere. Else. Like my house is a three bedroom, uh, one bath house. It's like 1100 square feet or something, maybe somewhere around in there. Like very, very, very modest in, in the middle of town in Salina, Tennessee. And it'll, you know, It'll go for somewhere upwards. It should go for some unless we find some horrible something horribly wrong with it for upwards of like one hundred twenty five thousand dollars or something, you know, which is like imminently affordable, but is also still crazy for Salina because no like it, it shouldn't be like, dude, until the past few years, <clears throat> like there's no way it would have been six figures. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, I think the yeah. question everybody wants to know is how long did it take you to scrape off all of the rebel flag stickers? Yeah. I, I, it's so, I, I guess I haven't talked about it publicly, but I, so we, this is the sec. we came in the, around the holidays to clean the house out. And I, and I talked about it on my Patreon for sure. And I may have brought it up uh, otherwise, but like, and I told y'all, I was sending y'all pictures and stuff, dude. Cleaning out that house, my, my, I ain't putting it on nobody else, my old bedroom specifically, <laughs> the sheer number of Confederate flags and Confederate flag adorned paraphernalia that <laughs> I found in that goddamn house, dude, was absolutely unreal. It was cracking me up. It was all <laughs> over the place. Every nook and cranny, there was some kind of rebel flag, something, a fucking pen or a pencil or a or uh, stamps or whatever the stickers, of course, po <coughs> posters. Yeah. There was a, my favorite piece was this little <laughs> County fair piece of County fair art, County fair art, some of the best art in the world, obviously. Agreed. And uh, you know, that you get for like throwing darts at balloons or whatever. And yeah, uh, with a picture it, of Hillary on them. Yeah. yeah you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a, it was, the background was the Confederate flag, and in the foreground was a little green alien with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, wearing a like Confederate colonel's <laughs> military cap, which makes no <laughs> sense <laughs> whatsoever. Like, it don't even begin to make sense. But like twelve year old me was like, "That's fucking what's up right there." That's it's super. hilarious to think that if intelligent life did finally reach Earth, that they would come during the Civil War and be like, "I know whose side we're fucking I'm on." on. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right. Dude, I was thinking about those, the alien, we'll call it the alien movement. Just like three days ago, they were on t-shirts and everything. The most popular one I ever saw, I see it everywhere. It said, take me to your dealer. And it was like, the aliens get here. And when they find out about weed, son, yeah, it's on. And the rebel flag thing's dumber because it's like, you know, they might actually be into weed. There's no way they'd be into the Confederacy. Well, they probably are into slavery if you watch any of the movies. <laughs> right. That's you know. also probably why they came here. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> but um, this, this side's already done half the work, you know. Yeah. We'll we help them win the war, and then we make them slaves too, and then, you know, we're there. <laughs> But it kind of does make sense, actually. If you yeah, think, <laughs> it sounds, yeah, it sounds like you've been smoking that alien weed and making it work in your head. I, but I was thinking about how, like, That's back before the internet, up. back before the internet, if you wanted memes, you had to go to the county fair. That's what I was thinking yeah. about. That's all I wanted to get <laughs> yeah. to. It's like this is just memes, but they put yeah. them on posters and t-shirts and big that's Johnson like- shirts. Yeah. We're kind of all over the place, but that's that's actually another thing I want to talk about. I took the boys to the Los Angeles County Fair last week. No, Drew, you ever been to the L.A. County Fair? I have not, buddy. I feel like, much like church, when I left Morgan County, I think I swore that you off. Done with that? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it was kind of wild to me how, like, it was in many ways, it's still just a county fair. It's really? just way, way bigger. Yeah. Like, it's way bigger, obviously. And they have way more stuff, but like in terms of like tackiness, the, the types of things they have on offer and shit like that, it's like, and the types of things that's going on, the food, the rides, the games, you know, they had, they had, they had livestock showings and shit. They had, you know, pigs and cows and all that stuff. They had big events every night. Like they'd have, I think they had like some nights would be tractor pull type stuff and that sort of thing. But other nights would be concerts and it was like vanilla ice was one of the nights. Did P O D play? I've been thinking about P O D lately. No, I'm trying to think. They did something the other day that was in the news. Isley Brothers was one of the nights. No no shit. Okay, but at the livestock showing, was there someone who threw red paint on anyone looking at the livestock showing? No, 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 (laughs) because this was like, you know, this was like the county fair demographic largely, which like I'll point out, in Los Angeles County, whole lot of uh, Latinos, which yeah. like you know, checks there's, out. There's overlap there, of you course, know, a mm-hmm. fair amount of it. Uh, but they yeah, love you, hilarious t-shirts. We yeah, had right. a lot so, of Latinos at our county fair, but they worked there. Yeah, right. Uh, what uh, what about the baked goods situation or contest situation? I would like to know about that. Ooh, ooh like the contest. Now, I didn't notice that, but that's not to say that it didn't it didn't happen. There was there were plenty of like exhibition halls and stuff that we didn't make it into, so it could have been there. I thought you meant like the stuff you could buy to eat. And I was also want to know about that. It's not baked; it's fried, but it's all the same shit that you chicken hear about. On a stick. Like deep fried, yeah, chicken on a stick. Deep, you know, funnel cake, obviously. Deep a lot, a lot of in L.A. County Fair, a lot of churros, right? Shitload of churros, flavored churros, all that stuff. We got them churros in San Antonio. Them what other stick? Uh, what other kind Oreos, of churro flavors? The only churro yeah. flavor I know of is the cinnamon one. What other churro? They flavor? had Oreo churros, yep. which was like, and and they were stuffed. They were stuffed with the Oreo filling. Benton got one of those, pretty fire. Mm-hmm. They had strawberry churros. They Good had one. like chocolate churros. They had. I had an orange marmalade one once. That was oh, pretty God. flames. It was like by, seven or eight different churro flavors. All right, way, I got yeah. another question. Were there? Carnies. I mean, was there a guy who was clearly hooked on many thins and bad teeth yelling at you to come play a game and stuff? Yeah, but they were at, I mean, you kind of said this, but they also, they were mostly uh, Latinos. Who was, was that was Latino my first company. closer was about how we've right. even lost our carnies have right. lost their jobs well, to the Mexicans. You're right. You did used to talk about that because yeah, because I, when I was a kid at the Clay County or Putnam County fairs, were the ones I would go to, it was just, you know, white trash meth head carnies was, mm-hmm. was my introduction to carny them. And there wasn't none of them. Uh, and they, the these, I got to say, these carnies were much better put together. Uh, they had all their teeth and stuff. But, but, but buddy, the Mexicans much. took their jobs and they did it right. with quality, working yeah. for the same rate. But yeah, they're right. doing all the same things. They're barking yeah. at you, trying to get you to come over and stuff like yeah. that. And they're like, they can all do the rigged games do you know what i mean yep. yeah they're like, you're like no it's easy check it out you know and then they just like fucking barely toss the ball straight into the basket and nobody else can do it to save their lives like that type of shit mm. uh 
most of the games are the same. There's one now, I don't know if y'all seen it, where it's like, and I didn't do this because we let the boys pick the games, obviously, but there was a, there's like a fishing pole, fishing line. At the bottom of the fishing line is a, a red ring about that mm-hmm. big. And beneath you on the ground is a beer bottle laid over on its side. And you have to take the hook on the end of the fishing line, put it around the neck of the beer bottle and stand it up mm-hmm. and make it stay up. Mm-hmm. And again, the carny running that booth was just, I, I sat there and watched him do it six or seven times. And it like worked on me. I was telling Katie, I was like, I was like you see it? I was like, I, I, I think I can do that. I was like, because he's making it look easy. But again, the boys didn't want to do that one. So we didn't. But I watched some other people do it and no other regular person was able to get it to stand up. It's one I bet I'd hit it that. Looks. I knew he was going to say that. I fucking knew I he meant, was going to say that. I, being a card about all them games, I, I, I knew <laughs> what you meant. And I'm not necessarily <laughs> saying you're wrong, but. Uh, you got to be charming. You got to be able to manipulate people and you got to do drugs and uh, you got to hit. Yeah. I, I mean, you probably would be. I wanted yeah. my last question and then we can move on. Was my cousin Hannah there? Because <laughs> she I ran off with a carny in about 2003. And uh, now, well, the funniest thing was she got kicked off. Like she ran off with Ooh. the travel and fair and then was like back a month later and was like, they fired me. <laughs> Ooh. Also, bro, going Gee as way. an adult. And yeah. I mean, I knew this as a kid too, to a certain extent. Remember, as a kid, you can get like a wristband or whatever, ride all the rides, all that shit. But like, obviously, this ain't news. This ain't a headline. Everybody knows this. But like, it the sheer degree to which they like drain your wallet at Hell the county yeah. fair, like the way everything is set up to yeah. like, it's just also token absurd. this, token it's, that, and it, yeah. yeah, everything. It's wild. They really, really got that whole thing figured out, but. We're actually, I think we're going to go if Katie will uh, allow it uh, because we're, you know, we're busy fucking with that house. She told me, you know, she said before we came, she's like, you know, I'm going to be at that house all day, every day. This And I'm like, Katie, it ain't really fair to the boys to just go like, you know, they need to have some fun while we're here. It's like they just got out of school. They love coming back here and everything. We need to do some fun shit. So I rented a pontoon boat one of the days this weekend, but also we're thinking about going to the Cookville fair. Cause it's happening this week. And I think it'd be interesting to see the boys, yeah. you know, compare and contrast yeah. the experiences back to back like that. I keep forgetting about that. And I know you talk about it all the time and it should be obvious to me, but it's still not, but like you're and this, I'm not, this is not meant with any offense. It's just true. Your kids are more Californian than they are Southern. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. it, and I mean, obviously they're raised by you and Katie and both of y'all are fucking, you know, toothless morons like so that they're getting it from there but like my man's got an extra tooth and you went with the one thing that don't apply to him that's That's true that's on well his teeth don't hit the ones that he does have don't hit so mine don't either i don't have hitting your teeth don't hit our teeth don't hit we don't have good teeth (laughs) we have bad teeth we point out all the time when people say that we fake it we're like i don't know if that was the first thing we ever saw with sarah smarsh but my favorite thing that she did was writing about teeth and how it ruins people's lives to have bad teeth yeah um but yeah i didn't even i don't really think about that like obviously i know they go home like once a year for christmas and stuff but like you know they're kind of isolated with the family so it's just so like i i I would like to hear them report back from like the county fair now that they're of like reporting back age like they're both fucking regular people now it's crazy take them to the cookville fair tray and let the horse judges look at their teeth (laughs) <laughs> have i talked before that's california about, once again all over the place i know i've told y'all i've probably mentioned it on here but when i was in high school uh i was one of the single worst horse judges in the state of Tennessee. <laughs> yeah but i don't know if you've talked about it on here i, I mean, don't remember I, this it, it, it was a, <laughs> I had class, sorry hold on i'll mute took, uh, hey mick i took ag class every year in high school you know that's like in salina it was still very much like we still had home ec, right? And it's like every boy took ag, every girl yeah. took home ec, right? But I fucking loved ag class. It was just shit. We had yeah. a great ag teacher and everything, but like I took home ec, so uh, really, yeah, everybody did though. That wasn't a oh, it was separate, like a requirement. Yeah, that was like oh. a yeah, and and no, I mean I did fucking like it. Um, our home ec teacher made hands down the worst fucking biscuits of anybody ever, and doing oh, that, in, no, it ain't right, and like. 
because she was making them in the town of Chickamauga, Georgia, every single one of her students let her know. I don't know yeah. how she fucking survived, man, because every year she never got better at it. And everybody was like, Miss Bailey, these are some fucking Yankee biscuits. They suck dick, you know? And, uh, but anyways, yeah, I took home back. Yeah, that don't hit the biscuits part. Uh, I, I just realized because Bishop start middle school next year, they have home ec in, in Southern California still, but they don't call it home ec. They, they, well, I guess they've, they've isolated it down just to food, but like there are culinary classes starting in sixth grade. And, that rules. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think, I think it's pretty cool too. Do they I make them carry a baby man. around on their hip and teach them how to yes, balance that's a what checkbook? I'm saying. I, well, I think they've cut all that parts because they literally just call it culinary class. So I think it's just the food. Goddamn part. commie California. You can't even learn about the consequences of having sex. Well, we they just showed them a puberty video, both the fourth and fifth graders, Benton and Bishop. They, the parents had to give permission uh, for them to watch it, which, like, uh, that's like, uh, the, do we really need any more than, like, that system? You know what I mean? All this, like, school debate shit where it's like, you can't force this shit on my kids. And it's like, well, it's just like, do, you know, do so that. The, the problem yeah, is, but, though, when they start right. with, like, history. You can't right, force my right. kids to learn that we did slavery. It's like, well, right. I guess we can't, but shouldn't we? <laughs> and also, oh, yeah, right. it's different. It's different. I understand you, you we have to yeah. let parents say no to the puberty thing, too. But at some point, these children need to learn how sex works from somewhere. Like, I mean, I the, the parents need to sign something to say, I taught them. The pe right. Yeah, and the people that are like, this should be left up to the parents, I promise you those are the type of people that ain't doing it right. You know what I mean? They're not saying sure. the right things. Like Not doing any of it. Yeah, dude. Like, I remember, you know, back in, in middle school or whatever. Or, yeah, starting in middle school, I guess, when they – ours was called the um, uh, Why No program. Why No. Uh, Just like abstinence. Abstinence. Why question. No. Like, why you should say no. And I'll never forget. Was it fucking – Was it a play ahead. on Why No's? No, it's funny. I get that, but I thought that's it what was I think of when I hear it now. <laughs> and our and our PE teacher, who was a wino, his name was uh, Coach Gwen. He is long since dead. I'm certain he played football. <laughs> this motherfucker played football at Purdue, which is true. He played football oh. at Purdue. Claims nice. to have though. Claims to have though. In the first quarter of a game, broken his back in half. And completed the game. This is yeah, what he says. Think. Yeah, it, he's full of shit. But anyways, they come in and they're they're setting up this class and they're like, this is called Why No? And they explain what Why No means. And fucking Coach Gwen, who was the biggest fucking perv, he should have gone to jail. He stood up and goes, Why No? I say, Why Not? Like in front of all these middle schools, <laughs> and it fucking crushed. We were like, yeah. And then the girls were like, he's in our locker room all the time. We're like, hey, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is uh, fucking hilarious yeah dude. yeah yeah but but i remember when all that was going on like like it's looking back on it now it's like so true that like we should have instead of being told that we should have just been like guys by the way here's condoms and these are what because we know what y'all are gonna do but we didn't so, get any of that you know no, we just got don't do it what about you because i've heard that all this debate for years about abstinence only education that ain't good and, and all that but like did y'all have abstinence, abstinence only education in school? Oh, we, we, we didn't. We just had like regular. It was in health class, but it was like. Uh, we had a fuck ton of abstinence, like propaganda, the prom promise, all that stuff. But we also, I remember in health class, literally one day, one class, I think they separated the boys and girls. We watched a video and then somebody, I think, did a demonstration on how to put a condom on. And that's all Banana. we got. I think the girls got a lot more about pregnancy and how bad it is, like a lot the, of scare tactics. I watched the live birth video. I uh, no, but I think the girls that, did. I think they're like these boys don't need to say this now. That thing was infamous at Salina, dude. Everybody, yeah, not like, us. Everybody was like that. That fucking video. The, the boys, that, we all, everybody watched it, and you know it was like fucking traumatizing. <laughs> which was that's the, the idea. Point. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, see, no and I'm for that, that. For the record, me, me too. too. Yeah. Scare too, them, but fucking. we didn't. Yes. But see, our, but we didn't get any of that because their notion was like, well, if you just don't have sex, it'll never come to that. So we yeah, have no, I've heard of that policy. Yeah, I've heard of that in a, in a place. So stupid. Weren't you guys the rebels once upon a time? My school. Yeah. No, we were the Trojans always. There has well, been like schools around us that were the rebels. 
Uh, there was something about your anyway. Oh yeah, you guys. <laughs> Martin Luther King Day was a snow day, and before yeah, that, yeah. it was called Robert E. Lee. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not yeah. surprised that abstinence was the main form of trying to teach these kids. That's no, not. No, we were named after the Roman oppressors. God damn it! Can I do a uh, a shout out to um, Kalen Palufo, one of my dear friends from New York? Look her up. Great comic. Been on TV a bunch of times. You can find her Conan sets and stuff like that. She has this bit that I always think about when this comes up. And I'm I'm gonna butcher the whole thing, but the line that's so funny is uh, she's talking about sex ed being totally incomplete and not preparing you. She's like, sure, they taught me how to put a condom on a banana, but no one taught me how to talk the fucking banana into wearing a goddamn condom. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Well, and dude, like again, it just it's such common sense. It's like if you tell fucking kids, hey, don't do a thing. A lot of times, that's the only thing that they're gonna do. But I know that if if someone had told me, hey, listen, we know you're going to do this, but it'll hurt your dick if you do it with too many people uh, a bunch of times. So just wear this and you can do whatever you want. I would have like related to that. I've been like, oh, yeah, word. I'll do that. I've tried really hard with my nephews when booze and drugs comes up and it'd be coming up with them too a lot to just like be as honest as I deem possible, which, you know, it can be a little difficult because I'm a little wild, but just be like, like I told one of them once, I was like, look, dude, to be completely honest with you, I know you're going to do it. I hope you don't do it much. I said, he like, he's like really into science and facts. I'm like, just factually, your brain ain't ready for what drugs and alcohol do right. in a way where like, right. it's fun, but like your brain will like it too much, much more than it'll like it later. That's how people become addicted. And luckily what I kind of used on them and it's like this weird, sad aspect of where we're from. It's just like, Hey, you know, that guy who's 20 and he's kind of a loser now. Big part of the reason why I was, he's doing yeah. too many drink and too many drugs and too much drinking when he was 16 yeah. and it fucked his brain up and they yeah. that they can see like visually and like, whereas this guy who you see posting pictures and he's at college and all that. It's like, he didn't do it as much. I don't know if it works. No, so, but I mean, that's a better approach than just don't do it and you won't have to worry about any of this. Just right. to close uh, the loop from earlier, it, there's not much more to say about it other than, so like I said, I was in ag and our ag teacher was really like, he had us all signed up in FFA and shit like that, right? And uh, there was, I can't, FFA and 4-H, I feel like I don't, there's overlap between A lot of overlap. Both, yeah. both or what, but is it FFA or 4-H or both? I think 4-H is a national organization and an FFA is loosely it's like local organizations that have a loose affiliation yeah future farmers of america so it was uh they would have events right and you could most of us were like we want to be on the ffa team because you got out of school to go to these events right like you, it was during the school day so it's like a field trip but you got to go and do all kinds of shit soil judging pig judging cow judging horse judging land measuring uh like a, bu a bunch of stuff. And I just sort of got assigned horse judging and my <laughs> teacher like, you know, taught me how to do it ostensibly. And, you know, I was like the smart kid and everything. It's like, you'd think it'd be all right. And I go down there and like, I felt like I was looking at the right stuff. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, as a horse muscle. To, yeah. Right. I was kind of <laughs> saying, like, that, yep, that's a horse. But like, you know, you had to like give your rationale for why you scored these horses the way that you did in terms of like their musculature and their teeth and all that type of stuff. And I wrote it all out and then you had to present it. You had to like go in the room with the, like the judging of the, the judges who judge the judges, you know what I mean? Yeah. Go in there in front of this panel of people and present your like horse scores, right. With your rationale. And they didn't, it wasn't like American Idol. They didn't give you no feedback in there or whatever. Like, great. Thank you. Whatever. And then like the scores come out later and there was like 150 uh, students in the competition. I got like 147th or something. <laughs> like, just didn't know shit about any of them horse. And, but I realized like in retrospect, dude, I guarantee you pretty much every single one of those other kids I was going against, like grew up with horses fucking, For you sure. know what I mean? Like they knew horses. I just got like, all right, who's going to do the horses? Trey, you, you know, whatever. And, uh, yeah, but, it's, that, it's but, 146 people knew everything about horses. Not that you're just a fucking idiot when it comes to horses. I agree. I mean, don't you think it's pretty? Yes, it's two things can be true. 
Two things can be true is all I'm yeah. saying. I don't think you I don't think you hit when it comes to horses. Well, of course I don't, but that's the reason why. Yeah, yeah you're right. It's because I didn't fuck with horses. All these other kids fucked with horses, we which is do why a, they hit at horses. Yeah, I don't I think 147 of them not. fucked with horses. <laughs> I think there's plenty of them that didn't fuck with horses that you were way dumber than. You know what I mean? I think about there's this horses. Is great. Yeah, about this horses. This is so good. I think Please we keep need to holler at whoever that horse judge judger was and get us to do a horse judging competition to see if you still don't hit or if I'm better at you than horses. I know Drew's better at you th- at horses. He has said better at you than horses twice. Yeah. Well, you know, what horses are, you are pretty good at me, but I yeah, I want to I want to say the that back, upside the way back bus ride home from that event. I don't even know why it was girls there. I don't know what events they were doing, but that was the uh, on the same bus. Ugh. Yeah, first uh, first fingering experience. So nice, you know, nice. Uh, Look, uh, did she give you one hundred and forty-seven out of fifty? <laughs> um, I I wanted to ask tr- related oh, to that. that. Why didn't you be in you like get a book on it or ask for help I was before super you went? Arrogant back then about yeah. anything like i know that, so but I, I thought that would be related to like i'm gonna learn how to do this you know what i mean i didn't, I didn't used to have to learn horse hubris you know what I, mean? I mean i just I, of course i learned but i'm saying like up until that point in my life i never the I single dumbest like, thing about trey i got gathered as a teen was that he didn't know the his own limits well, yeah did, That's what I've what gathered. Intellectually, no, I did. Yeah, he was like, "I'm the smartest kid in Salina, so I'll probably be on NASA soon." And it's like, oh, yeah, literally, unironically, that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> that, Do you remember not NASA specifically? That is like, totally yeah, ironically, yeah. the dumbest thought in the world. <laughs> Do you, do you, what? I mean, I don't know why he wouldn't have thought that considering because how dumb I know everybody else I was. I was the fucking valedictorian too. And the smartest thought I ever had was, yeah, but this is some bright. This ain't it, dog. Buddy, I made straight yeah, 70s I and kidding. I thought that, so I can't call Trey dumb for it. Like, here's I was I think, dumb. Here, here, I do think one difference is I went to those math competitions where uh, the 12 year old children of PhDs in Oak Ridge humbled me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, I never, we didn't do any like, uh, academic bowls or nothing like that this is like trey was zero and zero and was like yeah i'm the champ hey let me ask you this i'm not like recruited by ivy league schools and shit i thought i was you know not equestrian university i promise you that (laughs) did you remember do you remember what it is about horses you didn't know (laughs) all of it (laughs) like what were some of the questions it's not questions there are no questions they just present a horse and they're like does this horse hit (laughs) <laughs> if so, why? Right. <laughs> if not, why not? Right? Friends in there, like, yeah, man, look at Dick. That's a sexy yeah. fucking yeah. horse. The dick, I don't know if it, you you'd think the not dick, a lot of anyway. crust. Uh, maybe they, it was all dickless horses. I can't remember. Uh, Geldings, but, those are called. Jesus, he yeah. is fucking stupid. Jesus Christ. Well, I meant not like. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, but. You know the crust on a the the horse's dick I'm talking about, right? That the don't dick miss. definitely wasn't. I, that was I for sure thought Pony too. was a lady horse till like pretty recently. I just oh, thought I definitely it thought it was a baby horse. horse yeah, I, thought, I, not, thought, I was probably 30 before I found out a Pony was not just a. Well, oh, that's what I meant. Well, oh, that's what I meant, baby. You told me. No, yeah. that's yeah, that's right. It was the same time. No, I thought baby too, not lady. Lady's a mare, right? Yeah, it was when yes. we met Kiwi that we found all this out because we started looking at what different types of horses there were. That's so funny. Man, that in court, fact, man. I literally didn't even know what a pony was. And, <laughs> I, was, and I was representing Clay County in the horse catching competition. Dude. Right? Like, <laughs> Imagine Trey out there funny. judging fucking the little one, Kiwi. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and this horse is tiny. Seems to be small, I've noted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But like, it's like, I remember it's about their like their leg muscles, their hooves, like I said, their teeth, you know, that type Wait, of shit. Is it possible that the freakishly large size of your hands is why this fucked you up? You're like, that, that you horse has four horse. hands. And they're like, this yeah, idiot right. thinks that's that horse off. is four hands. That's way off. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. I don't know, dude. I don't remember. I just know it was bad. But, uh, you know, like I said, bus trip was fun, so it was fine. Heard that. I almost didn't get to go to Washington, D.C. because I got in bad trouble at school. The worst trouble I ever got in my whole career. I broke urinals and shit. And uh, 
got to finger a girl on that trip on a bus. So I was like real light, real relieved. But I think that was my second time. Sorry, go ahead. The first time you get in trouble for something and the first time you finger a girl often overlap. I yeah, it's all them school. hormones, cuz. <laughs> I yeah, was right. fucking raging. <laughs> my yeah, break yeah, girls yeah. and fuck bitches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and girl and the girl's like, Oh, he's a bad boy. He broke a urinal. Come here, you know. <laughs> so yeah. I've openly talked before about like how, you know, in terms of man stuff, I mean I had a bit about it on our the special. My special's out on YouTube right now, by the way. You can find it if you want to. Damn boy, look it up on my channel. There's a bit in there about this, about how like I'm not a man. I don't know how to fix shit, that type of thing. Can't and judge my horses. Father, my father can't judge horses, can't do none of that shit. My father in law, you know, total man, huge man, right? And um so him and my mother-in-law, they're up here in Clay County right now, staying with us and helping us work on this house. And I knew it was going to be like this, but it's just really, it's not like he, it's not like it was a surprise or a secret. He knew that I wasn't a man, right? He knows I'm a pussy and all that stuff, but like, just really highlighting it for me all over again, which I knew, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm in there getting assigned the same task as my 10 and 11 year old sons are, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, go in there and scrape that wallpaper off the wall. Leave me the fuck alone, basically. But, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just a bummer. It's like, uh, I don't know. Is it cut? Like you got to be taught this shit at some point. Is it? Yeah. Just other, you know what I mean? And yeah. I mean, my dad's not a man, so that helped me. You know, I mean, he is, but he's, he's a man. He likes man stuff, but my dad, uh, like he, when I was a kid, he didn't teach me no man shit. Cause he See, was, like, he was working. Either, and my yeah. dad, like my dad definitely knew car stuff. My dad could work on cars for sure. And I feel like my dad at least oh. had some aptitude around the house and stuff like Dude, that. My dad never, built, my dad built furniture. He knows how to do it. He just didn't right. tell me. Just didn't yeah. you. I mean, yeah. my, my dad, my dad taught my older brother. And I have two theories as to why he buried. Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, you're not wrong. I mean, toxic masculinity is a big, but anyway, um, I, he, he kind of like, I think he thought he was teaching me by having me hold the wrench and go get shit for him and Dustin. Right. But I have three theories as to why he didn't really teach me much. And they're all overlapping. One, I had real bad allergies and I was a mama's boy. So like if they was like going outside in spring, my mom would be like, he's not going with you, Doug. And so like some part of my dad was like, well, I guess I'll write him off. He's his mama's boy. You know, might as well have <laughs> to write right. him off. Right. <laughs> Two related to that. I was good at the stuff my brother wasn't like school. And I, I think yeah. my dad was literally just like, That's oh, right. he don't need to know this shit. This, I, this shit sucks. I've, I've always thought if my grandpa, especially my grandpa was like a man's man all the way, could do all that shit. And I'm very convinced. I mean, I pretty much know that that, that was hit. Cause he was always like, you know, you're going to school, you're going to college. You're going to be the first one to go to college. You're going to be a doc, doctor or lawyer or something like that. And I think his attitude was always like, you just said, he was like, he don't, he don't need to know all this bullshit. It was he almost like, brain. don't get him he interested in it. Yeah. Like right. don't, like, don't get him excited brain. about Fords. Right. Yeah. And so I think that's what it was for me, too. But still, yeah. now that I'm an adult, I'm like, I sure do wish I knew some of that shit. You know? Right. I mean, but, me, too. But luckily, like, it's at least for me and Amber's whole relationship, because her dad's a fucking man as well. And like she she's all like, she, dude, it used to like, luckily, though, our entire relationship, I, we've been doing pretty well financially that anytime there's a thing that needs a man to do. I can call a man, you know what right. I mean? And now oftentimes her dad will do the things, but if I wanted to keep it from him, I'm like, I can afford to fucking call a man and have him do the man stuff. And no, and that's my thing is like, I've all, like now that I'm an adult and I don't have any of these skills, I'm like, well, as long as I continue to be successful in all my avenues of what I do, I won't ever have to know it. Cause I'll just fucking pay for it. But yeah, dude, I mean, I wish that I knew some shit, but my dad was very against me knowing anything. Well, yeah. My third theory is that I was good at sports and that was what my dad did with me. He coached me and was always there. And yeah, I appreciate that. It's great memories. I feel like my dad maybe was like, and that's, that's what you get. You get one thing for me. Each yeah, son gets one yeah. thing and yours yeah, is right. sports. You know, uh, I want to shout out our boy, uh, uh, Noah, uh, Fielding. Uh, yeah. he has a great joke that's on don't tell. I keep shouting out comedians jokes right now. I don't know why I'm in this mode about what you just were talking about, about phone and a man. He was talking about, how he just calls his dad. It's like every time I, like my car breaks down, I just call dad. I get dad on the phone. Dad's like, what's going on? I don't know, dad. It's making a noise. He's like, all right, hold on. Let me call grandpa. And then eventually 
what we do is we call AAA. And if you don't know what that is, that's a company where if you pay them a certain amount of money per year, they'll just send the dad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, true. I'm in, Thank- I'm in AAA. AAA hits. Cho, did, I, I yeah, I had a... Yeah, go ahead. I, 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 was, I was talking about my father-in-law, and I, I do think that there's always been this thing between us. He definitely loves and respects me because at the end of the day, he wants his little girl taken care of, and I financially take care of her and all that stuff. And he also, I think, re- he really, really gets off on being the dude that can fix things for everybody. Like, when we go on vacation, we always have, like, running bets in our family of, like, how long before we – uh, how long after we set our bags down is Danny reaching for his toolbox and fixing something in this fucking condo that don't even belong to him? Yeah, that's dad shit. Yeah, and sometimes it's before we even set our fucking bags down. He just loves that shit. Like, we'll go, we'll be somewhere and he'll be like, I don't like the way this toilet seat is. And he'll just take the toilet seat off, fucking fix it. You know, all that shit. So I think he likes it. But because of that, I'm, I am always like, anytime, like, Amber really underestimates the or or maybe overestimates how little of a man I am because it's like yeah dude I'm not sitting here using a sawzall I'm not gonna build a new back deck but like sometimes I'll come to the house and Danny will be there and he'll be leaving I'm like what are you doing he's like well Amber needed a picture hung up and I'm like god damn it I was like I can do that shit and right. but she doesn't she's like no you can't do anything and so she calls him and I'm having to sit there while he's on his way out going Danny by the way you know I can do that right oh yeah yeah fine whatever So I'm always trying to, anytime there's any of these situations, I catch it before. I'm like, Amber, don't fucking tell your dad. You know, I can do this, blah, blah, blah. Well, a thing came up and Amber doesn't realize she doesn't, she doesn't understand that tension that, that I feel, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't cross her mind that like these things are emasculating. She's like, oh, it don't matter. Nobody cares. So this is what happened recently. I have an old house. I love my old house. I would never want to live in a new house. I love old houses. But because of that, there is a downside where it's like, Old houses are susceptible to infestations because over time they get holes in them, right? So we got a couple of holes we got to patch up in our house because right now, dude, we have just a whole gang of, of mice that just that just be here. Like a fa- like family, fucking cousins, fucking like so many of them, and it's infuriating because me and Amber are very clean people. We've Who's called a kitty cat. That's what I fucking keep saying. We're borrowing my sister's next weekend, just like on a four day stint. I'm going to keep the cat, just see if we can, can't get rid of some of them. Greatest Anyways, weekend but, of that cat's fucking life. Dude. Oh, he's going to love it. He's going to love <laughs> it. Dude, I'm telling murder you. Fest 2023, murder fest 2023, baby. Yeah. At a mansion compared, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, dude, so at night, you know, I'll be getting up for like multiple snacks in the middle of the night. And when I get up, like, you know, that's funny. The, do you mean you get up and you eat two snacks or that you get up and you eat a snack? And then a few hours later, you get up and you do that again. It's both. Um, okay. I definitely eat multiple stacks at snacks every time I get up, but I also get up multiple <laughs> times throughout the night. Uh, right. It's bad. It's real bad. If I could just not do that, I'd weigh 160 and have abs. If I could just how much of a and, snack? Like, oh, we well, about? the first one I'll, I'll here's it kind of goes. Uh, it grows. Try, the first try one, tip sandwich. <laughs> The, no, the <laughs> the first one, I'm always like, I'm just going to get me a little, just a little something. I swear I ain't going to go back. I'll just grab like a piece of cheese and a pickle. And I will like take a bite of pickle, take a bite of cheese, take a bite of pickle, take a bite of cheese. And I'm like, oh, I'm good. And then if I wake up at like two to pee or something, I ju- dude, I'll go in there and make a fucking panini. Like, I'll really? Make, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, you fire nailed up it. the panini press at two in the morning? Yeah. I nailed made, it. I've made Alfredo, like fettuccine Alfredo <laughs> at two in the morning. Yeah, like a single serving, just enough pasta for me. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I get up, I'll throw my headphones in, and fucking next thing I know, I've listened to a podcast at 2.30 in the morning. I'm just in there fucking ratatouille in my shit. So anyways, when I get up, like, the, the rats, you know, they're smart. Like, they only come out when you ain't in there. Like, they be knowing. You don't you don't hardly ever see rats and, and me. Rats or mice, mouse huge mouse. difference. I need to know. Uh, I mean, I think they're mice because they're cute. You'd know. They're definitely mice. Yeah, they're mice. So anyways, mice. Yeah, they're not the New York shits. You know what I mean? These are like cute mice. So anyways, like I heard the other day them scattering when I came in there. And it's either it is we either have a family of mice or two grown raccoons. That's the, <laughs> those the only two possibilities of things. So that we either have two raccoons or it's a bunch of mice because that's how much sound they were making. So anyways, we've been setting out these traps. Amber's been setting out these traps. She's worried that they're not working. And and long ago in our marriage, 
I told her, and I'm about to get called a pussy, not only by y'all, but by our listeners. I don't care. That's fine. I have a moral aversion to the glue traps that they said yeah. for, because yeah, they're awful. They, they don't kill, kill them. It's torture. It's torture. Like, they also that, torture it, birds and shit. Okay. I didn't ever know that, but yeah. But anyways, like, cause I remember one time Amber had sat one down while I, we were gone and she put a glue trap down and I came home to a, a mice mouse that had ripped its own leg out trying to get out of the thing. And I was, and I told her, I said, babe, I'm not sitting here saying that I want a family of, m- 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 I can't say mice, a family of mice to be living here, but we've got to do it another way than this. Like I can't, I don't mind if they die, but this is inhumane. I can't stand it. She knows I stand firm on that. She knows I stand firm on that. So I come home the other day and she had, I had a grocery bag on the counter and I go over there and I'm getting shit out. And I noticed five of them fucking glue traps. And I came in and I was like, old me before therapy, I'd have just come unhinged. Bitch, I don't ask you for shit. You know, one thing. But I didn't. I was just like, she might have forgot. She might have forgot. I said, hey, babe, um, look, I know we've got a problem with these mice, but like, you know how I feel about these, right? And she goes, yes, I know how you feel about them, but I am at my wits end. I, none of the other traps are working. I've got to use those. And I was like, OK, I said, you know what? That's fine. I said, that's totally fine. I said, but I'm out. I said, you have to deal with the with the mice after this. Like, I'm not, I cannot see them in the glue trap and then go do anything about it because it breaks my heart. I said, so are you cool with that? Because if you're cool with that, then you can use these, but I'm out. Oh, I'll I know where them. this is going. I'll take, and she goes, no, that's totally, she goes, that's understandable, babe. I know that you don't like them. All right. So I go play golf or walk in the park the other day or whatever. And I get home and I'm sitting there for a while. And next thing I know, Amber's just like, oh, hey, dad, will be coming over here in a minute. And I was like, OK, word, whatever. Da, 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 da. And I'm sitting I go, hey, what's your dad? What's your dad coming over here for? And she goes, oh, uh, one of the mouse, it's in the glue trap. And so he's going to come take care of it for us. And I was like, fucking what? And she goes, yeah. And I go, Amber, Amber, we had an agreement. I said, I told you that you were taking care of those. She goes, yeah. And I'm having my dad come get it. Delegated. And I, go, and I go, I go, okay, Amber, but do you understand how now this just makes me look like a pussy? And she's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, from your dad's perspective, it's just you calling him when I'm sitting here at home and he's having to come take care of the rat. And she's like, well, you said you wouldn't deal with it. And I said, well, I fucking would have before this happened. Right. And it's like, even if I explained the entire circumstance of my father-in-law, it actually makes me look like more of a pussy. Because I, I wouldn't just go, hey, hey, by the way, you know, I do this. I go, oh, oh, Danny, I'm so sorry. It's just that I actually have a moral aversion to those type of traps. You know what I'm saying? Like, and mm-hmm. so I'm in a fucking lose-lose situation. What'd you do? Day, I didn't, I did nothing. I did nothing. I just let him come get it. Because he was, because he, she'd already told him. And he was already on the way. There was nothing for me to do. No, yeah, I, well, did I didn't talk to him. No, I didn't. No, no, no. I didn't. I stayed up right up here in my office. I hid from him. Yeah, I hid from him. I didn't leave the house, but I fucking hid from him because now it's just like, God damn, he can't. Rat's already trapped. He can't even do shit about it. So she not only called him over, she told him you won't do it. She, and why? No, she didn't. No, she didn't say any of that stuff. She just said. Oh. So, so no. So if I'd have been gone, if my car had not have been here, he probably would have just thought, oh, Corey. Right. But he knew I was fucking here. He knew. But I that's why I would have left. That's why yeah. I would have left. Yeah, that's so actually the, a good call. Well, I would have done that, or I think I would have killed the mouse. I almost killed her. Is now, what I, I wanted to do. I don't like those traps either. But once a mouse is trapped in one, I have to get rid. Like, what? I like know, I have to do it then. Like I can't I, leave yeah. it there. I gotta fucking stomp it or whatever. I mean, and I did the last time that that happened, and it just broke my fucking heart. And I and it I said. And I said, never again. And my, but I was like, just don't use these fucking traps. Just don't. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Just don't use these fucking traps. So like it was the reason it was pissing me off is, is you know, as men, we and I'm certain that we ask our wives more than the one thing we say that we ask them. But like, I don't think I ask for a lot. Don't use these fucking traps. <laughs> like, don't use these fucking traps. She did. And not only did she betray me on that, she then called her father to come pick up the fucking rant. That, that second part's. How's she not know? 
She don't but, know, and that and God love her, and that's why I'm not mad at her because she don't know. But I don't she know got how to she now. don't know. Yeah, like, oh yeah, she's not? listening to this right now. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. The, I meant like the glue traps. Are they like? Because I've never used them. Because I think they're fucked up too. But I just y'all tried the other types of traps and nothing worked. You tried poison we, and that. We type got of shit. we got like, a couple with, with the other the first place because she we just weren't getting the good results, results. with the other ones. Yeah, yeah, like we'd gotten one, but and frankly, she, you know, the the glue traps are catching them. <laughs> You know, they well, yeah, they, they can't get away from them. Also, I yeah. want to point out you're in an attic and you said, Anne, frankly, um, <laughs> <laughs> Andy, Andy, come here real quick. I'm going to make know my Andy. mom. You, do y'all know my Go mom ahead. used to look just like Anne Frank when she was a kid? Oh, I could see that. Nope. Yeah. We call her Anne nope. Frank. When we were kids, we called my mom Anne Frank. I don't know why I responded in my brain sexually to that. And I apologize to you, your mother and Anne Frank. Um, Andy, real quick, come and tell Andy has a, we were on the road and Andy has a, not a mouse, but a glue trap story. Oh no. Hi. Hey Andy. You're not going to be able to hear them. Oh, right. Go ahead. So, Hey, Hey guys. Yeah. So when I was in New York and drew was on the road with y'all, I went, uh, outside i was really sad one day and i was like walking outside to go get some fresh air and uh there was a giant sticky trap right in front of our door on the sidewalk and there was a bird stuck to it and the bird was like flapping trying to get off and i just started sobbing and i thought that it was gonna have to die i thought somebody was gonna have to kill it so I went back inside to get a trash bag and I was going to go walk down to the construct where there was construction and get one of the construction workers to put it out of its misery. Not, not a father-in-law, a different man. Mm-hmm. You weren't there. That's and then <laughs> I walk, I walk back outside and I was like, what am I going to do? I can't do this. And some guy walks by and he looks at me crying and then he like took a minute to process and then he turned back around and he was like, what's going on? And I'm like, this bird, it's, Oh, it's dying. Somebody has to kill it. You're going to have to kill it. And he was like, I don't think we have to kill it. And I was like, I think you have to kill it. It's stuck forever. And then he like bent down and he picked every little toe oh. off the sticky trap and it flew away. And I was like sobbing. I was a mess. I hugged him. I was like, oh, thank you so much. It was pretty traumatic. In a different I'm universe, not, she ran I'm, away with that man. I'm not yeah. trying to be funny. He's because for me. I'm not trying to be funny at all. This is genuinely what I thought. Whenever you open with, like, while I was in New York, I 100% thought that was going to end with, and I walked out, and a homeless man was eating the bird. That's what I thought was, (laughs) that's what I thought you were going to say. And I was like, oh, shit. It could have gone anyway in New York. That was the same year. I think, like, uh, I think that was, like, a month afterwards that I found seven dead blackbirds drowned in a uh, a bucket in our backyard. What? Drew yeah. never told us about this? No, that was the day I was like, we're moving. Holy it's a sign. Shit. That's how I got her to leave New York. It wasn't uh, the fact that she was borderline suicidal and we were very close to splitting up. It was seven dead birds as a sign. While we were on tour together, there was a bucket of dead ravens in your fucking Oh, backyard. I think I told y'all. I'm Maybe pretty sure did. I did. I feel, but it, it was seven was of them. Seven years. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dang yeah, that's a lot of dead ravens. That is it was awful. <laughs> what Thanks, baby? Did they get in the bucket and that's how they died? Or it was so it was this bucket I was using for uh like compost and soil for my garden. And I guess like it had rained and because yeah. of all the stuff that had been in the bucket, it like the water was really oily or something. So I guess all the birds like they thought it was a bird bath and yeah. they just got in there and then they couldn't get back out and they all drowned. <laughs> You I've always got, heard that ravens and crows are smart, but that don't seem smart. You no. think no. at least by the fifth one, they'd be like, I think something don't hit about that bird bite. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to rescue each other, maybe. Or, yeah, I or do you remember that? To eat, since Larry's dead. <laughs> you remember that musical theater roommate we had? Yeah. Uh, I think she killed him. Oh, yeah. I mean, that checks yeah. out. She Pretty came nice. back and did it. She was so weird. It'd been funny if like, and I know she would never have done this because she was going to go get a construction worker ever to do it. But like, it would have been funny, very macabre if she was like, well, this poor thing, it's got to be put out of its misery. So she gets like a shovel or something. And like, right when she hits it, the same dude who was walking by was like, 
what are you doing? You know you didn't have to kill it, right? He's like, oh, you just pulled their, he's like, you can just pull their feet off. They'll fly away. They're fine. Like it, ha- it happens all the time. Or, or like if when that dude had saved the bird and it took off, some lo- a bus hit it, yeah. like in the street. Like, <laughs> That's what I'm you know, it starts to flap and it gets in the street and just, <laughs> and just feathers fly everywhere. Or I better yet, a hawk don't think, ate it. I genuinely don't think either of those would have bothered Andy. I think it was like, <laughs> Oh, this thing is suffering and I can't watch it suffer, but I can't also bring myself to be the one to kill it. Did you see yeah. that video that one time of like they had a some lady had like I want to say it was like a baby flying squirrel or something. And she was sitting there petting it and showing her kids how cute it was. And she was like going to show them how it flew. And she threw it up in the air. And as soon yeah. as she did, buddy, a fucking yeah. hawk said, wow, <laughs> so funny, dude. I know I've. I know I've told this story before, but it's been a long time and I'll try to make it quick. My Katie's sister's husband's my brother-in-law. He was at home with their kid. They had three kids. And at this point, the oldest one is like five, maybe it's like five, three and one, something like that. Like they're little. And he's at home with those three kids and he's on the couch watching TV or whatever. And they're over by their back door, the back, it's a glass door in the kitchen. And they had, at the time they had ducks in their backyard, like baby ducks, little ducklings. They just got them. And they're saying they're like, Daddy, daddy, something's wrong with the duckies. Something's wrong with the duckies. And of course, he's sitting there on the couch like, Dang, there's nothing wrong with the duckies. The duckies are fine. They're like, no, no, something's wrong with the duckies. And he's like, God damn it. Fuck it. You know, he gets up and he walks in there and he walks over there and he looks out and they're, the, the ducks are just out there. So he's sitting there with him. And he's like, see, look, the duckies are totally fine. And right when he said that, this gigantic hawk swooped <laughs> down and just murdered the shit out of one of those, just started tearing it apart from him. And his kids all start screaming and crying. And, <laughs> and that, that, that kills me every time I think, deader than that ducky, it kills me every time I picture that. In my I got head. one I nie- <laughs> One of my nieces, LJ would be tore up, but my Amber's uh, brother's kid, Sadie, dude, that would be the most metal shit she ever saw. And she'd love it. <laughs> like she's that type, you know, mm-hmm. like I almost I wish, I, yeah, I almost wish that that would happen in front of her. She'd be like, that's I wanna, what you get, motherfucker. I want to ask, I'm against those fucking traps because it looks like torture. It is torture. I don't but, mind them dying, but just I don't want them to hurt. So that's what I was going to say is like, if I had been there, it would have been nothing for me to stomp that bird out. Like, I don't have a problem killing animals, but it's like making them suffer for no fucking reason. It seems weird well, to me. For the record, so like, I killed like the last you said, rat. But you didn't like it. No, I didn't like it. Well, my whole thing, I would have done it. It's just that I, it was me saying to Amber, I'm fine with you betraying me, but now you've got to be the one that does this, you know, so maybe you can see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess that have... run his you... whole afternoon sitting <laughs> yeah. up there crying and everything, <laughs> yeah. looking up bird videos and shit. <laughs> Would have been funny. I'll, on this note, one other thing. This wasn't a personal experience. It's just a meme. I saw or like something that went sort of viral that just always killed me. It was uh, some like little sort of hippie-ish type chick took a picture of herself uh, and she had found this turtle in the road. She's like, found this poor little guy trying to cross the road. So I decided to get him to safety. And the picture is of her throwing him off a pier. Like, go home, little buddy. And the top comment was someone going, that's a tortoise. They can't swim. You threw it in the water. <laughs> Dude, did you know that their shell is a living organism? Like what do you skin, mean? I mean right? I that the whole thing is a living organism. Yeah, but you, I'm you saying like, organ? their shell, like, it's not like a, it's not quite like a motorcycle helmet to where like, it, like if it gets a crack in it, it it can more likely get infected and them die. So like, yeah, was, I did know, I knew yeah. that much. I've seen them, uh, you know, been run over, split open. Yeah. And shit, I just assumed I that it was much. very regenerative, like lizards and shit. And like, I guess it can be, but like more than likely it'll just get infected and they'll die. And you're not supposed to paint them like NASCARs. Uh, because well, that, that, buddy. <laughs> that clogs their pores. Well, listen, I mean, the number three, don't take up too much space. That's not many pores. 24, I get it. We won't do that one I no more. You. But three, come on. Thinking about somebody doing a fucking burnout on a queer turtle's True. head because it was Jeff Gordon. Is your father-in-law a man? Yeah. I mean, he's an army guy who was a warden in prison. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh, Christ. He's been in, I think. Andy, how many wars has your dad been in? Two? I thought it was three. He's what two and up. Oh. on Christmas. 
Oh, he's been in that one a couple times. Yeah. The War on Drugs. He was on the wrong side of that one as a warden. Uh, I work. He's a yeah. He's on. He's also a drug task force agent. I worked out with him during the pandemic when we drove across country and was staying there. Gross. Uh, he had this like thing. It, it was one of those things. By the way, there's a whole ecosystem of like conservatively skewed companies just advertising on Fox News. Oh, yeah. And this was just workout straps, but the whole story behind it, he was telling me, was like, you know, these uh, guys in Afghanistan couldn't find a way to work out because they didn't have any weights in between murder and children. So they invented this system. It's, it's, it's a system that's been around forever. So he's telling me all this and we're doing the workouts. I could not keep up with him. He has had, he's got one lung because of Agent Orange and he's had two back surgeries. And he, I couldn't keep up he was being able to do more pushes and pulls than me at that particular time and no, i wasn't in bad shape 60 uh, something no he was like 71 what? damn bro God, dude, dude, yeah man, andy though. was a like we either think that well, andy was like a 10 year later accident or a let's try to save this marriage situation her her parents were old when they had her so he's old dude oh well, dude oh well, to be fair to you he could he's older than i thought he could be now circling back into old man strength, right? Which you have oh, to account for. Oh, he is. For, yeah, you know what he I mean? definitely like, is. So, dude, uh, yeah. speaking of uh, speaking of Vietnam, uh, I was at my. Well, he said Agent Orange. Uh, yeah. uh, speaking of Vietnam, I was at my high school alumni golf tournament last week and <laughs> ran into. <laughs> That's not. What Sounds I'm like at. you're going to be like, and I hit one straight in the sand on 17 after being up a straight I, going in the final play. You know what? Having to see somebody I didn't like. Yeah, you know. having, having to see all them motherfuckers is my personal Vietnam. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I, no. I called something my personal 9/11 a couple months ago, and somebody got mad at me, and it was really funny to me. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I've done that too, and people have gotten mad. And I have noticed that there are certain things where if I do it and people get mad, I do actually go, "Oh, this is a learning experience, Corey." They, they I, I get it. You probably shouldn't say that anymore. You're growing, but whenever I'll say, I'll call anything my personal nine eleven. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I was there for nine eleven. I, I was there. I mean, not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's my yeah. my generation was traumatized about it. We're allowed to joke about having our own nine elevens. Then we also had the fucking Patriot Act and goddamn shitty yeah. art for. 20 years and Toby Keith people complaining about us saying something is our personal nine 11 is my personal nine 11. Yeah. Anyway, very, 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 very quick because speaking of nine 11, uh, so the, the other day <laughs> were you at a we're, golf tournament. Now the other day we're at, uh, we're at this school thing and it's Bishop school thing. So Benton's with us. Benton's sitting there beside me and Katie. And he goes, what time is it? Actually, no, he didn't say. I asked Katie, I said, hey, what time is it? And she looks at her watch and she goes, 9-11. And Benton, who's like sitting there on a the tablet or something, she goes, it's 9-11. Benton goes, plane crashes. <laughs> <laughs> and I started laughing, you know, and Katie's like smacking me around. She's like, Benton, you can't do that or whatever. You know, Trey, stop laughing, all that shit. So that That's was hilarious. hilarious. But anyway, go ahead. So wait, Corey. anyway. Corey, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, what I'm was at- I'm at the golf tournament and uh, I'm sitting there. I am talking to s- some people in this and I won't, I won't say their full names cause I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but I'm, I'm talking to this guy who comes up to me and he's just like, Hey man, are you, are you Corey? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, Hey man, he's like, uh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually a fan. He's like, I graduated a long time after you, but he goes, really the real fan though is my dad. Um, and he's here. And the reason that he came to this tournament is cause he saw you on the sign up sheet and he was like, I've got to meet that guy. Right. So I'm like, oh, absolutely. Well, it turns out his dad's a lot older than him. And his dad was he comes up gray hair, Vietnam hat. And he's a very, very like super sweet guy. But like, you know how those dudes from Nam seem real Nami. Uh, he was, you know what I mean? They still got that look in their air like something's, you know, about to come out the corner. So he was just like, hey, man, he's like, oh, my God. He's like, I'm so glad to see you. And I made him a fucking great guy. And and uh, he started going. He goes, man. He goes, God damn it, brother. He said, I love you. My son turned me on to you. He showed me when you was on the CNN, you sticking it to that fucking bitch, Marjorie Taylor Greene. And he's going through <laughs> this whole thing. And me, like, as a, we are in the middle of the Gordon Lee alumni tournament, everybody there's a fucking Republican. So, like, just as a joke, I was just like, I go, hey, you know, we, me and you might want to keep that kind of talk down or we're going to get shot by someone who's standing their ground. And he kind of looked at me and he goes, 
I was in fucking Vietnam. I'll call that bitch whatever the fuck I want to. <laughs> and I was and I was like, you're goddamn right. I hate to do this. You froze up at the worst possible time. Oh, what God did you guys say? I I said, so anyways, he he's sitting there talking about how Marjorie Taylor Greene don't hit. And I yeah. said, hey, buddy. I said, just so you know, keep it you down. Know, we might want to keep it down for that. And he looked at me and he goes, I was in fucking Vietnam. I'll call that bitch whatever the fuck I want to. Like as loud, <laughs> as loud as he could, like made a scene. And I was just like, you know what? You're goddamn right you can. And I believe the kids nomming. call that yeah. 10 toes down. Yeah. <laughs> that rules. Oh, God, it was great. It was truly fucking great. Uh, and yeah, I did have a good round. It's pretty fun. That, uh, the rest of the day was the opposite of Vietnam and 9-11. We, uh, yeah, we need more men like that who espouse. You know what I mean? We need more. We need bullies on the left. I, I tried doing a bit about this. I was writing it one night about a guy I know, and then that guy got drunk and smacked me that very same night. So uh <laughs> kind of put me in my place. Well, what y'all boys got coming up here in the next couple of weeks that you need to promote? Trey, are you doing a show in Salina? <laughs> no, but I have. You would have if you hadn't uh, no show out on it. Yeah. Not that I, not that I blame you, but anyway, <laughs> uh, you can go to TreyCrowder dot com, see all my dates, and then also uh, there's a link on there to the special, which is on my YouTube channel. Check that out too. You know, Patreon dot com slash Trey Crowder if you want some bonus stuff. That's about it. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I'll be in Denver at the end of this month uh, and beginning of next. I think it's the last day of June, first day of July. Also, Fort Collins and Boulder. I'm going to hit them all. I'll be posting about that soon when I get all the links. Um, you can go to Gravy Baby uh, Patreon and or listen to the Gravy Baby podcast. If you listen this week and or go to the Patreon, you can hear about how me and DJ shot a tater gun and then it broke. And speaking of not being a man, I tried to fix it. And it blew up in my face, quite literally, mm -hmm. and thinned out my already not doing well hair the week that I booked something for the first time in literally years. So I'm going to be on TV this week, pushing my hair forward, hoping for the best. But it's a very funny video. DJ tried to shoot me with the tater gun, too. Go see yep. how close he came and if he hit me. My goodness, that is the best excuse I've ever heard for having an even more receding hairline. Yeah, you can catch me at parttimefunnyman.com for all the bonus stuff. And this weekend, uh, I will be opening up for my friend Leslie Jones at the Carolina Theater uh, in Durham there and also the Charleston Music Hall. And then on June, uh, or yeah, wait, what what month is it right now? This uh, May, but just barely. Yes. So that this weekend at the Durham uh, in Durham at the uh, uh, Carolina Theater and Charleston Music Hall, and then June twenty fourth, I'll be back with uh, Leslie at the James K. Polk Theater in Nashville. So y'all come see us. I'm sure they're already probably sold out because it's Leslie Jones, but I'll be there. Hits does hit. Uh, thank you all for listening to the Well Read Show. We'd love to stick around longer, but we got to go. Uh, tune in next week if you got nothing to do. <sighs> thank you. God bless you. Good night and skew. Hey guys, it's your boy, Corey Ryan Forster. I'll be short and sweet. PartTimeFunnyMan.com is where you can get bonus stuff from me. Got bonus podcasts, bonus videos, essays, stories, all sorts of cool stuff. It is $5 a month, but if you can't afford that, it's free. At either tier, you get the same stuff. It's just if you have the money to pay for it, I'd, it'd be cool if you did that. Uh, but if you don't, it's fine. You can get it for free. You can also make a one-time donation to the show on PayPal using buttercreamcory at gmail.com. Love y'all. Parttimefunnyman.com. Well, he's a part-time funny man. He does stand up when he can, but he wants to stay at home and raise his kids. So he sits behind his computer and he does this. Classy.